Hello everyone and thanks for watching Edupedia World Videos. In this video we will begin a new topic on probability that is the concept of independent events. Before we get to the concept of independent events, we look at one more important concept called the multiplication theorem on probability. This is basically just a result we get from our previous equation. We know that P E conditional F, which I'll repeat from the previous video, is the probability that an event E happens given or on the condition that event F happens. This is equal to P of E intersection F by P of F. From that we can just take the denominator here and what we get is P of E intersection F is equal to P of E conditional F into P of F. So I'll just write this once more. P of E conditional F is equal to P of E sorry P of E intersection F is equal to P of conditional F into P of F. Now we can also write P of F conditional E is equal to P of F intersection E by P of E and we know F intersection E is the same as E intersection F. So this, all, this is also equal to from this equation P of F conditional E into P of E. So these two rules are known as the multiplication theorem on probability and we can actually extend this further to more events. So let's say we have three events E, F and G. So the probability of now we just need the probability of intersections. So E intersection F intersection G will basically be now we'll use it for the first case first. We'll use we'll take E intersection F to be the first thing. So E intersection F we'll replace by E so here we have the first thing uh, P of E intersection F which is from here into P of the second thing conditional first thing so G conditional E intersection F which can be written as P of E intersectional F will just be written as P of E times P of F intersectional E and E intersection F we can also write as EF so P of G conditional EF. This is P of and this is also obviously written as EFG where you omit the intersections. So this is the multiplication rule which can be quite useful and it will be useful for us when we go on to the next concept which is the concept of independent events. By the way you can extend it to four or five intersections similarly it's not that big of a deal. So now we look at the concept of independent events. Let's say you have a standard deck of 52 cards and uh, you have the event E which is that the card is a spade. And you have the event F which is that the card is an ace. So one for the suit, one for the number. So we'll draw one card from the random from the deck. What is the probability that the card is a spade? We know that it is one by four. And what is the probability that the card is an ace? We know that it is one by thirteen. Right. Now what is E intersection F? It means that the card is the ace of spades. Right. There are, by the way, there are a total of 13 spades. So therefore, 13 by 52 comes out to be 1 by 4. There are a total of 4 aces. So 4 by 52 comes out to be 1 by 13. There is only one ace of spades. And the probability that E intersection F will happen will be 1 by 52. Right. Now let's look at the conditional probabilities. Probability that E conditional F. What is this? We'll do it in two ways. One just intuitively. E given that F happens. F means the card is an ace. 
So we are given that the card is an ace. What is the probability that the card is a spade? Well, we know that we have four aces. The ace of clubs, the ace of diamonds, the ace of spades, the ace of hearts. So we have four aces and uh, um, one of them is a spade. So it will be one by four. But let's do it the proper way as well. It will be P of E intersection F by P of F, which will be E intersection F is 1 by 52 by P of F 1 by 13, which is 1 by 4. Similarly, what is P of F intersection E? F, the card is an ace. E, the card is a spade. So once we know that the card is a spade, what is the probability that it's an ace? Well, you have 13 spades and only one of them is an ace. So this would be 1 by 13. But if you do it the proper way, P of E intersection F, which is the same as F intersection E by P E, comes out to be 1 by 52 by P E is now 1 by 4, which is 1 by 13. Now here you will see an interesting result. P of E conditional F is 1 by 4, but that is also equal to P of E. P of E is 1 by 4. Similarly, P of F conditional E is 1 by 13, but that is also equal to P of F. So the probability that E happens, given that F happens, is the same that, uh, that the probability that E happens, whether or not F happens. Meaning, whether or not the event F occurs is independent when you are trying to reduce the probability that E occurs. The probability that the card will be a spade is 1 by 4, regardless of whether or not that card is an ace or not. And the probability that the card will be an ace will be 1 by 13, regardless of whether that card is a spade or not. So these two events which follow these properties, two events A and B such that P of A conditional B, P of A given that B happens, is just P of A, whether or not B happens, will be independent events, similarly the other way around. So in this case, E and F are independent events because P of A intersection, P of F intersection E is equal to P of F and P of E intersection F is equal to P of E. Now another important property of these independents can be seen from the previous multiplication rule. We saw that P of E intersection F is equal to P of E times P of F intersection E, which can also be written as P of F times P of E intersection F. But if E and F are independent, then P of F conditional E is equal to P of F and P of E conditional F is equal to P of E which means P E intersection F is equal to P of E into P of F. And this is generally taken as the definition of independent events. If there are two events E and F such that the probability that E and F both happen is the probability that E happens multiplied by the probability that F happens. Any the two events E and F which follow P of E intersection F is equal to P of E probability of E multiplied by probability of F means that E and F are independent. Right. And by the way, we've used this many, many times before. Uh, when you throw two dice and you need the probability that the first one is a 2 and the second one is a 3, what do you do? 1 by 6 into 1 by 6. Right. 1 by 6 is the probability that the first one gives you a 2. 1 by 6 is the probability that the second one gives you a 3. What is the probability that the first one is 2 and the second one is 3? 1 by 6 into 1 by 6. We just used it a few minutes ago. So in this, we had implicitly assumed that the two events are independent, which we know is true. If you throw one dice at one place and the other dice at the other place, we assume that what number came on the first dice has no effect on what number came on the second dice. Similarly, if you throw coins three times in a row, whether or not the first is a heads or tails has no bearing on whether or not the second will be heads or tails. 
The second will be heads 50% of the times, regardless of whether the first one was heads or tails. So this is something we've used again and again for the simple um, events. But when we go down to complicated events, this is sort of the definition for independent events. If P of E intersection F is equal to P of E multiplied by P of F, then E and F are considered to be independent events. And this can also be taken further. If A, B and C are independent events, P of A intersection B intersection C is equal to P of A and P of B, P of C. So if you throw a, a coin three times, the probability that you have the first one as heads, the other one as tails, the third one as tails, is the probability that the first one is heads, one by two, multiplied by the probability the second one is tails, one by two, multiplied by the probability that the third one is heads, one by two, tails, sorry, which is one by eight. So this is something which we've already used many times before because it's quite intuitive, but now we see the proper definition and the rigorous proof of it. Let's look at a few other properties of independent events. First, two events E and F such that if P intersection F is not equal to P of E into P of F, then E and F are said to be dependent. And also, you shouldn't be confused between the terms independent events and mutually exclusive. There are two separate things. Independent events are events for which P intersection F is equal to P of E into P of F. But mutually exclusive events are events such that E intersection F is the null set or P of E intersection F is zero. So they're different things. In fact, if P and P E and P and P E and P F are non-zero, then you cannot have independent and mutually exclusive events. Two independent events will never be mutually exclusive and two mutually exclusive events will never be independent. Which is sort of obvious because if you have two events which are mutually exclusive, the fact that the first happens automatically guarantees that the second one won't happen. So they are not independent. The probability of the second one is dependent on the probability of the first one happening. Also, if E and F are independent events, then E and F dash are independent events, and so are E dash and F, and E dash and F dash. They all are independent events. I just prove it for one. If E and F are independent events, P of E intersection F is equal to P E into P F. But P of E can obviously be written as uh, the combination of two sets P of E intersection F and P of E intersection F dash, where F dash is the complement of F. Right. So from this we can get P of E intersection F dash is equal to P of E minus P of E intersection F. And if E and F are independent, this equal this is equal to P of E minus P of E P of F, which is equal to P of E, which we can take common, one minus P of F which is equal to P of E into P of F dash, where F dash is the complement of F. So P of E intersection F dash is equal to P E P F dash, which means E and F dash are independent events. You can yourself prove it for the other two. Let's look at one problem in which we apply all these concepts to make it a little bit more rigorous. Three coins are tossed simultaneously. This is the same problem we started with. So the total sample set will consist of eight elements H H H H H T H T H T H H T T H T H T H T T 
TTT. A total of eight elements. Now we are given three sets of events. E is the event that we have either three heads or three tails. So that will be the set H H H and T T T, which has a total of two elements. F is given to be um, having at least two heads. Meaning either three heads or two. So H H H, H H T, H T H, T H H. A total of four elements. And you have a third set G, which is at most two heads. Which means either zero head, one head, or two heads, just not this three heads. So it will be H H T H T H T H H T T H T H T H T T T T T which gives a total of seven elements. We need to find out which pairs of these are independent. So first we'll calculate the intersections. E intersection F will be the elements that are both in E and F so that is only H H H. What about F intersection G? So we need this and this so these three heads will not count the other three will count so we have H H T H T H T H H a total of three this is just one and if we want E intersection G we will not have HHH but we will have TTT which is 1. Now let's look at the relations P of E intersection F can be written to be uh, 1 by 8 P of F intersection G is 3 by 8 P of E intersection G is equal to 1 by 8 what is P of E into P of F that is equal to this is 2 so the probability here is 2 by 8 or 1 by 4 the probability here is 1 by 2 the probability here is 7 by 8 so we have 1 by 4 into 1 by 2 1 by 8 so we see that P E intersection F is equal to P E into P F so E and F are independent events. What about F and G? P F intersection G is 3 by 8. P of F into P of G is equal to uh, 1 by 2 into 7 by 8 which is 7 by 16 which is not equal to 3 by 8. So F and G are dependent events. And if we look at P of E into P of G this will come out to be 1 by 4 into 7 by 8 which is 7 by 32 which is obviously not 1 by 8. So E and G are also dependent events. The only pair that is independent is E and F are independent events. So this completes independent events. In the next video we will start on Bayes theorem. Thank you.